Now you might be asking yourself, what exactly is a mini cart and why should I care? Well, this is a mini cart. And this is another variation on what we can do. Let's start off by taking a quick look at exactly what we're going to be creating. If we take a look in the top corner, you can see I've got a button that shows me exactly how much is in my cart, the quantity, the price, those kinds of things. If I click to open this up, we now get this little pop-out mini cart that allows us to see exactly what's in our shopping cart. It's also all been styled to sit into the design that we're using for this particular website. I've also gone ahead and focused on exactly what we want. For example, we want people to check out, so the checkout button is lighter, the subtotal is evident, everything is clean and easy to see. So let me show you how we can build all of this with a mini car feature inside Elementor Pro 3.4. So to speed things up, I've already gone ahead, created a header template and used one of the pre-built templates that we have as part of Elementor Pro to create that header. I've already got a section on the right hand side now ready for our mini cart and we're just gonna simply drop that into there. So we're gonna drag and drop that into the top right hand corner. There we go, that's now inserted our menu cart into our header. Now we can go ahead and style this, configure it, do what we want with it. So let's take a look at what we have to do all that. Before we take a look at the menu icon, I wanna just jump down to the cart section because I wanna show you the different kinds of pop-out that we can actually have. At the moment, if we click on this, you can see this now slides out from the right-hand side. And if we want to, we can set this to be on the left-hand side. So you can set this up however you want. We're gonna leave this on the right-hand side for now. You can then choose whether you want this to be opened on a click, which generally would probably make more sense, but you can if you want to also have this on hover. So let's close that down. When you hover over the button, you can see it pops out, which I could imagine would probably get a little bit frustrating and distracting at times. So with that opened up, let's set that back to on click. And let's just quickly take a look at some of the options we have for this. So let's just select it. Now we can go ahead and we can adjust the position and the various different options. So for example, we can open and close using the close icon and we can also enable and disable this. We can choose the position where we want this left or right hand aligned. So pretty easy. You can have the remove icon. So that means that this little X that you've got there that allows you to remove products directly from this pop-out menu is super useful and is really quite quick and easy for anybody that wants to just delete something from their cart. I do appreciate having this in there. It really does speed things up. And then we've got alignment for options for the price and quantity, the cart dividers and so on. I'm not going to go into too much detail with these because these are pretty much exactly the same, whichever option for the cart you choose. And we'll be covering those in a moment. Okay, so let's set this back now to the mini cart. And this is the one that I generally tend to prefer, which is more a case of you can click, it'll pop out and you get this little drop down. And again, you do have the option for on hover. One other thing to take a look at is the cart position, and this is relative to the button that we're using. So for example, if we set this to be centered, you can see that centers it over the button. So it's a left, it aligns to the left of the button, right, so on. So I'm going to set this to be aligned to the right-hand side because I want to set this button to be over the right-hand side as well. So we're going to come back to our cart icon. We're going to set the alignment on there to be right-hand aligned, and that now looks a lot better. Okay, so let's go through step by step now and customize this to make it look a little bit more in keeping with our overall design. So let's start by choosing the icon we want to use and how we want the button itself to actually look. So let's close this down. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose the icon. Now you can see we've got a range of different options from carts, baskets and bags. So you can set this to what you like. I'm going to say I want to set this to, let's take a look at basket medium. That looks okay, but I think basket solid looks better. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Then you've got your items indicator, and this is just, you can see the little red circle with the three inside it. That's just the number of items sitting inside our basket or shopping cart, whatever you want to call it. You can set that to none to remove it completely, or you can set this up to be the bubble, which you've just seen, or plain, which personally I don't like very much. It kind of looks a little bit weird. You've got this random number placed there. But you can also just disable the subtotal if you want to, and then it kind of streamlines exactly what you see. Personally, I like to keep the subtotal inside there, and use the bubble option. I just think that looks the best option. You can choose to hide this when it's empty as well, which is probably going to be quite useful, but entirely up to you. Hop over to the cart section, and now we can go ahead and configure things. So we've already seen these first set of options, so let's take a look at the close cart, remove items, and so on. Let's open this up, and let's just take a look. So do we want to remove this close? Personally, I would say it makes more sense to leave it there, but if you want to remove it, you can do. And the same goes then for the item, whether you want to allow people to remove it directly from inside you, which I would suggest that you leave that enabled because I think it is a great usability option. 
and you're going to control the position. The price and quantity, the cart dividers, whether you want to show those to sort of streamline even more so. And then you can also disable the view cart or checkout buttons. Uh, I would generally tend to leave those options enabled. If we hop into the additional options, this is kind of useful inside you. Automatically open cart. So what this basically means is when you add a product to your cart, this will automatically pop up and show the user that something has been added to the cart. Now there is one caveat to using this. Let's just enable it and let's just update our design and pop over to the front end and take a look at it in action. And then I can show you what I'm talking about. And I scroll down the page to where I've got some products. So now, let's go and say we want to add this to the cart. So now it's been added to the cart and we've got view cart and add to cart, but we don't know this has been added. So if we scroll up, you can see it has popped that little section open, but it doesn't scroll you back to the top of the page. There's something to bear in mind if you use this feature. Your user might be a bit confused that this pops up, but they don't see it. So just bear that in mind. Let's go back into our additional options. And the final option we have inside you is the automatically update cart. Now what this does is basically if you remove something from your cart, for example, we'll take this money plant away, it'll update everything for us. So we'll just update that by removing it. And you see the price updates, our cart in the, the mini cart updates. Pretty cool, pretty useful. Okay, so we've seen how these basic options work. Let's just pop over to the style in. Now we have a lot of options inside here to style things. So let's just quickly run through and make this look the way that we want it to look to fit in with our design. So what we've done now is we've gone ahead and we've made this look a lot more in keeping with the design that we have for our site. So let's update this and let's just take a quick look. Okay, so back on the front end of our site, our button now is a bit more in keeping, it's styled and branded the same way as the rest of our site. We can click to open this up and everything inside now has also been branded a little bit more in keeping. So we can very easily go ahead and make changes to all of this, including any messages, everything using this new function inside Elementor Pro 3.4. Now, before we wrap things up, let's take a quick look at what this actually looks like by using a mobile and tablet device so we can kind of gauge things. Now, obviously, you have full control over editing this on mobile and tablet for various different settings, so you can configure this a little bit more. But let's just open this up. So on a typical kind of mobile device, open this up. It all looks pretty good. And if we switch over to something like tablet view, again, you can see everything is looking fine. So it looks great on mobile, tablet, desktop, and you have control over how you want to style things if you want to have some kind of differentiation between those various different kinds of device resolutions. So that's how you can set up a mini cart using Elemental Pro and the new features in Elemental Pro 3.4. If you found this video useful, why not give it a thumbs up? It really does help out. If you didn't get value though, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.